love this guy. I love this guy. Honestly, where would the Leafs be without him? No, we're good. Scores almost every game. Like, pretty much. The mustache actually suits him. Yeah. His number ends in four. Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Let's go! Good. We all feel Stop! good. Stop! Never gets rusty! What am I doing? Into my kitchen! Producer Drew, can you fix all this? <laughs> and when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple, crumple, yeet! Saw so that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Bobby McMahon joke. It's funnier if you don't explain it, but I thought I should. Leafs win! Four to two over the St. Louis Blues! Ding, 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 ding! That's what they, they do in the arena when they score. You know I hate it because the Leafs only play the Blues twice a year and I bring it up every time they play in St. Louis. Dude, if the Leafs were in the Central Division, I would hate those guys. Just for the bell! Dude, what do you even say at this point? The Leafs, now a perfect 4-0 since the Morgan Riley suspension. The Leafs' third pair tonight was Max Lejoie as the veteran ahead of Marshall Rafai making his NHL debut. A bunch of players were game time decisions due to injury and illness. Bobby McMahon was in the top six. And this is where I want to talk about the St. Louis Blues because Blues fans, I need you to help me out. What's going on here? Cause like, you look at the Blues' recent track record, they've been decently hot over the last month. They're in a playoff spot. They've played the Leafs twice over the last two weeks. Looked awful both games. They only had 21 shots on goal this game. And that's a six shot improvement from a week ago. So like, you look at how they've done over the last month, you look at how the Blues are in the standings, they're obviously not bad. Ily Samsonov was good in this one and he won his fourth straight game, but he didn't need to be spectacular or anything, make Dominic Hatchik saves. Like, sorry, I guess I'm just confused because I never get to see the Leafs be another team's kryptonite. Like, okay, let's play a game. Leaf fans, how do you feel about the Leafs? On any regular night, how do you feel about the Leafs? Hmm? Like out of 10. Give me your answer, give me your answer. Oh, okay. How many numbers does that number go down if I tell you the Leafs are playing against the Sabres in Buffalo? Hmm? Yeah, right, right. They just don't win there. Like, it's just a thing. The Leafs had 29 shots on goal tonight. The Blues have 36 in both games against the Leafs this season combined. And like, dude, this was an afternoon game. I have a toddler. I was excited to watch it with my toddler. And in the first period, it was like both teams were hell-bent on getting him to watch soccer. The shots on goal were 6-6. Six to six. There wasn't even a penalty. Spice it up with a power play or something. Nothing. But I gotta admit, went pretty well. I was I was happy with that. Because so many Leafs were game time decisions, because of injury, or because of illness, or because of suspension, there's a lot of things going on with the Leafs right now. The third pair was a guy Sheldon Keefe never uses, and a guy who just, he's playing his first game. And the Blues, on home ice this time, are going to want to have a better performance than they did a week ago. I, I thought for sure the Leafs might get stomped in this game. And it's not even because I'm pessimistic about them, it's because you can't win every game, and if you're gonna lose a game, this one makes sense. Well, they come at a first intermission, Matthew Nye says, we good, we good, we good. Matthews and Marner digging for the same puck. Matthews comes up with it, gets it over to Matthew Nyes. Now Nyes has the puck, he's in the slot, but Colton Pareko's right there, and he's like, I'm Colton Pareko. I didn't have the best game against the Leafs just about a week ago, I'm gonna be fine though. I'm gonna be fine. Wow, that guy's fast. Oh my god, oh my god. Ew. Matthew Nyes! I could barely get air out there. Ew! Dude, that was disgusting. Yeah, that was a ooh, gross hands from the big kid. And he, he did it. He did it! Another guy got to 10 goals! That might not seem like a big deal to you because you know what the Leafs are. They have a bunch of guys who score all the goals. There's John Tavares, although he's having a bit of a down year, but he's, he's scoring a bit lately. William Nylander, William Nylander. Mitch Marner, very underratedly, his goal scoring has gotten better over the years. And Austin Matthews, who's having one of the best era adjusted goal scoring seasons ever. Beyond that, they have one guy who's cracked double digits so far this season, Callie Yarncrow, which is bad because one, he's injured. Two, in his last nine games before getting injured, he had zero points. And his 10th goal of the season was scored against the San Jose Sharks on January 6th. So the last Leaf to crack double digits for goal scoring for the Leafs was over a month ago. Nyes, after definitely looking drained heading into the All-Star break, oh, he looks exactly like the player we hoped he would be. The Blues do tie it before the end of the second, and this just sucks. There was a wonky line change out there, and Ryan Reeves was very briefly 
line mates with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. Reeves has actually played pretty well recently. Yeah, he got rocked by Nathan Walker. That wasn't great. But generally, he's been pretty good. Up. Trip and penalty. Trips Tory Krug, goes to the box. I didn't think the Leafs power play was bad. The Blues were moving the puck around incredibly well. And with his 15th of the season, I gotta see this guy's career statistics against the Leafs. Brandon Sod. Dude, between the Blackhawks, the Blue Jackets, the Blackhawks again, the Colorado Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues, it feels like this guy has scored against the Leafs a lot for a guy who hasn't really played against them a lot. And so we head into the third period with a tie game again closer than I thought. But even though they come out of the second period with the goals even, Leafs outshoot the Blues 14 to seven. How's the third period gonna go? A lot like the second. Matthew Nye scores 22 seconds into the second. Austin Matthews goes, okay, let's go for another first minute goal. Matthew Nye again making good things happen or rather just being on the receiving end of a high stick. Jordan Cairo gets him right off the opening face off in the, of the period. And I gotta say, good on Cairo just because he gave Nyes the little butt tap there. I mean, you still high stick him in the face, but like that's gonna happen. It's an accident. And he's saying that's an accident. I don't, I don't know, you just don't see a lot of players do that. Austin Matthews looking for 50, Mitch Marner looking to extend his point streak, they find each other, as they so often do. Marner to Matthews and ew! Almost had one earlier in the game on a breakaway, he gets one here, and I, I, I mean, he's, he's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Remember last year when we were like, oh no. You know what, no. We shouldn't make fun of Lee fans for panicking a little bit about Matthews last year. Because we were like, is he okay? And then they just casually mention at the beginning of the season like, oh yeah, no, he was injured. And we all just kind of went, oh, that makes sense. And then he proceeded to get half a dozen hat tricks. So, okay, Leafs have a 2-1 lead. We like that. But a few minutes later, Matthew Nyes takes a penalty. We don't like that. He looked frustrated with the call. I, I don't mind him looking frustrated with the call and muttering under his breath as long as you don't scream in the ref's face. They don't seem to have a problem with it. Not talking to anyone in particular, Michael Bunter. Feels like the kids had a bit of a tough whistle against him. Not that he hasn't been able to draw penalties. He's just... He's taken more than anyone else on the team. When he gets a penalty, I'm like, really? He's a rookie. That's kind of what rookies go through. A salute. I don't know why I said that. A salute. Like, I don't even know if that's appropriate for that situation. Because of the New Jersey Devils in the Sopranos costumes, that's 100%. But then, something incredible happened. After the Blues moved it so well on their first power play, William Nylander. He gets the puck, and it looks like it might be a breakaway. And it's a little bit of a breakaway, and it's a lot of bit of a breakaway, and all of a sudden it's a 2 on 0 because here comes Holmberg! And I thought something really stupid. Billy! Pass that! To which Willie said, do you know who I am? Dude, the second he shot and scored, I'm like, I'm an idiot. Pass? Really? Yes, it's William Nylander's elite skill there. Great hustle, great speed, great shot. That's what gets the goal done. But... Joel Hoffer, like, he's a good goalie. For a minute, it was Nylander going one-on-one -on -one with a good goalie. Holmberg's hustle to get in there, even though he doesn't get an assist, that's what allows this to be so easy and effortless for Nylander. Or rather, it looked easy and effortless. I'm sure it was incredibly hard. Blues pull Hoffer. Hoffer? Hofer? Hoffer. I'm gonna say Hoffer. Hofer. I think it's spelled Hofer. I'm gonna say Hofer. Blues pull Hofer with over four minutes to go, and you kind of felt like it was gonna pay off. They had difficulty getting shots through the Leafs. They were doing an incredible job blocking and just getting in the way and everything, but the Leafs could not get out of their zone. Finally, with barely over a minute to go, Pavel Buchnevich brings the Blues within one, and you clench a little bit. But we shouldn't have clenched. We were dumb to clench. You know why? Bobbert McMobbert! I don't think that nickname's gonna stick. Bobby McMahon all over Tory Krug. He gets the empty netter, and the Leafs win 4-2. Now, if you're a Leaf fan watching this video right now, you're like, yeah, he was all over Tory Krug. And he talked about a penalty there. You could tell he sort of wanted one. But he didn't make a big deal of it, and to me, this is where I want to stick up for Tory Krug a little bit. Because I have no idea what people are going to say about this on the St. Louis Blues side, but I wonder if people might look at that as, oh, he was too lackadaisical there, I don't like the body language. Tory Krug has played in the Stanley Cup Final. Tory Krug has been on several deep playoff runs. Tory Krug knows what he's doing. He's been around. What you're starting to see in some games, not all, but some, is refs are slowly adjusting to playoff whistles. Bobby McMahon on Tory Krug there for that empty netter? Eh, might be a holding call in the preseason, maybe October. 
you're pushing it November. That is, that's just not a February penalty. Battle! It's a battle. And Krug knows that the Blues got away with one. Tavares was very unhappy about that with about five minutes to go. It comes out in the wash. The penalties were 2-2 and hockey players are weird and they look at that as a well-officiated game. Just because the penalties are even does not mean it's a well-officiated game, but... That's how they call it in the playoffs, and that was kind of a playoff game in terms of the officiating, I mean. The officials for this game, by the way, from scoutingtherefs.com, TJ Luxmore and Frederick Lecouillet. Respectively, Luxmore has only done 24 career playoff games, Lecouillet has only done 37. I'm guessing they want to do more, and that's what a playoff game looks like. Questions. This isn't a question, it's just a good point. From Nick Laflame, Ilya Samsonov has won seven out of his last eight after going unclaimed on waivers not too long ago. Leafs are 4-0 during Morgan Riley's suspension. Matthews and McMahon are going crazy scoring. Are the vibes back? I mean, did the vibes ever leave? It's not like I had a freakout video like uh, two weeks ago about the Leafs losing to Ottawa. They got over 100,000 views. No! Okay, maybe. This is February hockey. The Leafs are on a road trip. They're digging deep into their organizational depth and they're doing okay. It doesn't necessarily mean anything for the playoff picture. The Leafs still need to make the playoffs. It's looking good, but they still have to make it. What I've been waiting for and anticipating is for the Leafs to turn it on, to go into playoff mode. Like one of the things that we uh, always praise the Tampa Bay Lightning for is over the past few years, especially when they were going to three straight Stanley Cup finals, whenever someone got hurt, whenever someone was out of the lineup, the Lightning were like relishing it. They're like, oh, someone's out of the lineup. That means we get to try harder. Like, it's like they were so good they needed to play the NHL on a higher difficulty. And then they did. And they won anyway. You gotta admit, the Leafs are playing on a higher difficulty right now. Look at that decor, dude. Listen, you're watching this video, right? That means you're a hardcore hockey fan. Even if you're not a Leaf fan, you're at very least a hardcore hockey fan. How many of you had ever heard of Marshall Refai before he was recalled? I'd kind of forgotten he was on an NHL deal, to be honest. I, I knew he impressed with the Marlies. I don't think I ever mentioned him in the prospect pyramid. So you know what? Even though you got to see him tonight, he played a little rugged. He actually almost scored a goal. Goal. Let's learn a little bit more about his game in Marley Minute with Nick Barden. Take it away, Nick. Marshall Rafai put in the work with the Toronto Marlies, and now he's getting rewarded for it. After being called up to the Maple Leafs on Sunday, Rafai fielded questions from the media, and he acted seemingly calm doing so. However, his play on the ice, at times, is the complete opposite to that. When speaking with Marley's GM, Ryan Hardy, at the beginning of this season, he called Rafai an incredibly passionate player, whether it comes to his game on the ice, nutrition, or the work that he does in the gym. The Maple Leafs really like his skating, which Hardy called called world class. What they also like though is his decision making with the puck, whether it's in the offensive or defensive ends of the ice. Rafai was placed all throughout the Marlies defense core this season, giving him every opportunity to stand out after signing a two-year, two-way deal with the Maple Leafs in July. Standing at six foot two, he's strong, he can move the puck, and most importantly, he cares and will stand up for his teammates at any point, which I'm sure Toronto, the fans, and the Maple Leafs organization really, really enjoys. The 25-year-old's come a long way since signing a one-year AHL deal with the Marlies back in March of 2022, and now he's living out one of his dreams in getting to the NHL. I don't know. I don't want to get too excited about this player. He's like their 12th defenseman or something like that. But this is now the second straight year that the Leafs have had to dig deep into their organizational defensive depth and they've gotten decent games out of guys that let's be honest a lot of us have never heard of last year victor mete and mac hollowell gave them some decent games uh uh crawl i, I forget his first name now oh my goodness victor joseph Philip! Philip Crawl. This year it's William Laguson and it's Simone Benoit. None of us ever thought would be this high in the lineup. And Max Lejoie and uh, now it's Marshall Refai. Quality? Yeah, they need some more quality, but the quantity is, is obviously there. They're giving them decent games. And guys like Brody and Lilligren are thriving in increased roles. Opinions on the call that wasn't called for JT when he got tripped behind the net. Me and my mom love your reaction from the UK. Sort of like I was just talking about, uh, this is getting towards the season where they put the whistles away. 
And, like, is it dumb and stupid and bad? Yeah. Call penalties. If you see a penalty, call a penalty. It's dumb and stupid if you don't call a penalty a penalty. But every single year this happens. And as a Leaf fan, I'm bored of it. I'm bored of complaining about it every year. Like, listen. There's a really good chance the Leafs play one of the Panthers or the Bruins in the first round. Both of those teams have one objective, and that's to try and kick your ass. Dude, Matthew Kachuk just did an interview the other day where they asked him about his strategy for like the first few minutes of the first period, and he talked about telling his line mates, I forget who he's on a line with, but he talked about telling his line mates for the first 10 minutes, there's no puck out there. Which means, for the first 10 minutes, they didn't even try to play hockey. They just tried to beat the crap out of their opponent. They won! It's stupid. It's definitely stupid. But there's, I mean, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and, ex and ex expecting a different result. I'm done with that. I'm not going to complain about, well, I'm going to complain about the penalties, let's be honest. But I'm certainly not going to expect it to change anything. Put it this way. Your job as a fan is to react to what you're seeing. Their job as players is to adapt to what is happening. So do I like that non-call on Tavares at the end of the third period? No. Do I wish Tavares had gotten up faster instead of yelling at the ref? Yeah. That's how it works, dude. Thoughts on day games? Day games rule! As someone who usually stays up very late doing these videos, love them! As someone who's a dad and never gets to watch games with his kid, love them! As someone who has to get up tomorrow morning, love them! Sometimes, sometimes, just like, give me like half a dozen a season. Out of 82, can you give me six out of 82 games that start at like one or two? That's all I want. I don't think that's greedy. Does any? I don't think that's greedy. Even if you don't like a day game, six in a season? Eh, that's not greedy. And lastly, I just want to show you this because it's wonderful. The Leafs tweeted, belt pick will not disappoint. Followed by, as promised, Max Domi and Ryan Reeves celebrating with Mitch Marner who got the belt. The dude has been so, so good recently. That is, that is, ser is, is it serotonin? Ser that's the happy one, right? Serotonin? No, what's? What's the one that you take? Melatonin is the one you take to sleep. That's serotonin. Wanted to acknowledge this Matthew Nyes quote. Matthew Nyes says he has about 50 or 60 people going to the game against Arizona on Wednesday, which is probably a section in that arena. Ah, I see the Toronto media has already infected that Arizona-born player. You know what's great? Some, some reporter's gonna count. They're gonna count and they're gonna see if it's actually a whole section. And this is well deserved of a shout out. Producer Drew, I promise I'll end it here. <laughs> Coming into this game, TJ Brody had the team's third highest plus minus behind Matthews plus 20 and Marner plus 17 at plus 16. Thinking about his season so far, does this surprise you? Yes, it does surprise me. And then I thought about it and it shouldn't. Even though TJ Brody has struggled at times this season, He's been with Morgan Riley, who has not done a whole lot of struggling. He was struggling a little bit, and then he got suspended, and, well, uh, he's he's an even plus-minus rating over the last uh, four games. But, dude, TJ Brody does this. Like, he's a good defenseman, even if he makes gaffes. Generally speaking, good results follow him. We've been talking too willy-nilly about trading this player. Honestly, I would love if they could extend him. It'd be great if he took less. That's probably not gonna happen on account of no one does that. But he's on the back nine of his career. If he is willing to do something that's longer term but lower on the cap, that'd be great. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. They're recording a brand new Chris Johnston show for SDPN. They're recording it today. Not sure when it's going to get released, but tomorrow we're recording a brand new Steve Dangle podcast. This week it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and go to the YouTube channel and Apple Podcasts. Become an SDP VIP. Mwah.